what's up youtube welcome back to the isa monologues channel earlier today guys i did this whole video for you on live because i just didn't have the time i really was stuck on putting a video out today but i didn't have the time to get the video together and edited and uploaded blah 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 so i was like you know what i'm just gonna go ahead and do it on live so i can get the video out today but it turned out that the audio I don't know what was going on with, with, with my phone. I used my phone, but the audio was so messed up. So I just took the video down and was like, I'm just gonna do this over the right way. Got my little setup together. I even got the little microphone going for you guys. So that's what y'all deserve. So basically I wanted to give you guys some really good um, beginner shadow work prompts that you can start to work on. Um, I suggest you do it in the form of journaling because when you write down uh, the answers to these questions, you're way more intentional with your thoughts and then you can also go back to this journaling stuff. It's different when you're just thinking of the questions out loud. You can, it, it's, it's not as intentional in my opinion and it just doesn't give the same effect. So um, I'm gonna be reading these questions to you guys from an article that I found online. It's a blog and they have 26 um, like beginner style questions that you can work with. If you haven't watched um, my other video on the dark night of the soul, I published that like two days ago in which I talked about um, doing shadow work as a way to overcome that period in which if you're not familiar with it, the dark night of the soul is a period of an emotional crisis that you may experience um, as a phase during a spiritual awakening. So. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I kind of suggest that you should watch that one first, maybe before starting this, um, if you if you feel like that's the area that you're in or whatever. But if not, then let's get right into the video. So just to give you a brief overview, if you're not that familiar with shadow work or the nature of it, essentially, um, it's a concept that was founded by the philosopher Carl Jung. Um, and he says that until you are able to examine your unconscious shadow side, you can't, there was a typo in there, you can't release the control it has over your life. So your shadow is like your inner self. Um, it's really easy to point to somebody's, the persona that they show and say like, oh, that's the kind of personality they have, that's the kind of person they are, etc. when you're describing somebody. Um, but everybody has a shadow, meaning these are traits within them that they've either, or well, mainly repressed and shunned away over, the li over their life lifespan. And a lot of times that's due to um, traumas that we've experienced, whether they're severe or not severe, it's just things that we've experienced um, that weren't really pleasant for us. Uh, and so that's why you'll find, that you, you'll hear people say things like, um, deep down inside when somebody is like hating on you it's really because they're jealous of you or things things of that nature so what shadow work is going to do is get you to find a deeper level of self by asking yourself questions that you probably never really thought to do otherwise and you'll start to find that once you do start to get in the habit of doing these exercises, you come to a lot of self-realizations about yourself and actualizations that some things like you just didn't even realize about yourself at all. Other things you may have known, but it's it's not a side of you that um, you definitely don't wear it on your sleeve like a badge of honor. You know what I mean? It's like stuff that you don't even like <laughs> about yourself. So. A good way to tell something like this is if you're in a heated argument with somebody, probably somebody close to you, and they say something that just triggers you. And it may not even be like the worst thing in the world, but it's like every time they say this one thing, you just like go off. And you probably have some shadow work to do in relation to that specific topic and how that has influenced you throughout your life with your behavior. So that's one example of that. Um, Another thing is sometimes we've repressed so much about ourselves that our personalities kind of change over time. So I know that was the case for me. I've grown into a more, um, more of like a reserved, calm person. And I wasn't like a super like hyper child or anything like that, but I definitely had, I definitely was more expressive 
in my younger years than I was as I started to get older my voice started to become like a little more silenced and reserved so you'll find that if you ask some of these questions that you ask to yourself if you ask some of these questions to people that you've grown up with like your parents for instance or your siblings um, lifelong friends things of that nature you might find that they have different responses to how they view you and your personality to them than you even view of yourself. I did a uh, Myers-Briggs test, like a personality test before, and I was like kind of confused about how to answer the questions. I was like indecisive about things because I'm like, well, I used to be like this, but I'm more like this now. So I didn't even know like what, how to answer, like which one was more dominant, I guess, because, because of the repression, right? And I also read this book. Um, I'm gonna link it down below for you guys. I can't think of what it's called right now for some reason but it's basically another personality book where there's like four main personalities everybody fa usually falls into having like a primary and a secondary one and at the end of the book they had a questionnaire similar to the myers-briggs where depending on how you answer those questions about yourself they'll tell you you mainly fall into this personality category and i was having a hard time again choosing things for myself so they also said to have people unbiasedly take it for you. So I had my dad take it for me and what he got as a result from what I got as a result was two completely different personalities, like completely. And I expected that because he answered it as in the way that he knows me, in which he's always known me to be, um, I guess you could say just like a more assertive, I don't want to say aggressive, but an assertive, argumentative, very productive person because he's known me from my like my childhood personality, I guess. And like I said, I grew into a more like reserved, relaxed person. And so that's what I got out of the test. So there's those are two completely different personalities. And you start to look at that and kind of question like, well, for me, when did that change really occur? Right and like why did that change occur like was it for the better was like what, what what are the positive aspects of that what are the negative aspects of that and these are the kind of questions that you'll find that you're asking yourself and really getting into so without further ado <laughs> i'm just going to name uh excuse me i'm going to read probably about five questions off to you and again i'm going to link this actual blog post in the description below because there are some really good questions on here so it's it's, it's a really good prompt to start out with um, so the first one is what personality traits in others do you consider pet peeves and I would just add on to that like when you're answering these questions like think more deeply about them you can answer them for what they are and then like really think about that question so when you do answer it whatever the pet peeve is like what about that really bothers you like why does that bother you so much and the more you keep asking like whatever the answer to that is it's like well why is that when was the first time you experienced that like you know what i mean it might go back to an actual incident that happened in your life and ever since then you associate this with that that kind of a thing so uh what was the time i felt unexpected Unexpectedly triggered by another's actions. So again, earlier, like I said, that word triggered. Usually, if something's like triggering you and it takes you to a very emotional or angry state, like pretty quickly, I would guess that it's it's related to something that has once, um, I guess you could say, traumatized for lack of a perfect word in a situation but something that has kind of like um haunted you for a while or something something that you need to work through heal and get over and that's really the point of the exercises anyways like so you can understand um like without emotion you can understand like psychologically why things affect you the way they do and you can um work yourself up to a point where you're basically building your emotional intelligence this is a good one. What was I like as a child? So again, I would say to ask people who knew you at that time um, also and get their perspectives, right? And like ask your parents, like even, even times that you probably don't remember, for instance, like I have a toddler now, she's not gonna remember what she was like as a toddler. We're gonna tell her those things. So even ask those kinds of, those kinds of questions um, and you'll see if there are consistencies as you go along 
your life and the way that you behave. <laughs> so what traits do your parents have that you hope you don't? <laughs> I think a lot of us already know the answer to some of these things, but again, like this can go down the whole rabbit hole if you just keep answering the questions why. Um, there was one on here that I really liked and it's what are your parents' values and how do your own values differ from that? And this one struck me like, yeah, I really like this one because I grew up in a household that was um, like the culture was like a collectivistic culture, meaning it, like the community comes before individualism. And so when it comes to values, that's something that's like highly shared. And if it's not shared, it's like highly a problem. <laughs> so when I see a question like this, there is a lot attached to that with me and um like i said how my personality has changed over time and kind of if anything became a little bit more adaptable and conformist in a way that it naturally wasn't so that's something that is like almost how do i put it put it like this it's a problem and i'm working through it but so this was a good question for me i think if anybody comes from that kind of a household or that kind of a culture where like shame is a really big thing this is a very good question for you have you ever felt embarrassed of who you are and what made you feel that way so i think this is one that everyone can probably relate to um because we've all felt that before we've all felt shame and embarrassment and what don't you like about yourself and why don't you like that about yourself so as you go through this list, like I said, these questions, they're not rocket science. Yeah, <laughs> they're not rocket science. Why did I just say that? But they really do get you thinking. And like I said, some, some of these have follow up questions afterwards, like, why don't you like it or whatever? But, you know, you're probably going to be thinking of follow up questions yourself as you answer the questions. You just look at your answer and continue with, you know, more details into what it really is. So, OK. I'm glad I did this over for you guys. I'm not even gonna lie. I wish you guys were able to hear the live one that I did because it's like the first time you do it, you just like, you get it all out. But this time it felt like I was reading almost. I, I didn't even remember everything that I said earlier. So that was my bad. But anyways, guys, thank you for tuning into this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Again, I'm gonna leave this um, link to the blog post in my description below and i will see you guys in the next one